Here's a brief discussion of the solution to number 57 from our examples today. And we're going to use a technique of multiplying by a form of 1 to evaluate an indefinite integral. The integral in question is uh, 1 over 1 plus sine of x. Okay, so the idea here is that we're going to multiply by a form of 1 so that we can change this into uh, a, an indefinite integral that we can evaluate. And the trick for problems like this, excuse me, is to multiply by a form of 1 that we construct using the conjugate of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by 1 minus sine of x over 1 minus sine of x. And this trick works more often than you might think. So I've multiplied by a form of 1. I've stuck it in right here between the 1 over 1 plus sine of x and the dx. And then that turns this indefinite integral into a different version of itself. When I multiply the numerators, I get 1 minus sine of x. And when you multiply the denominators, you're going to get 1 minus sine squared of x. This is just a difference of squares, right, when you multiply two conjugate binomials together. And this guy is a famous Pythagorean identity. Uh, that we're going to change that into cosine squared of x on the next screen. So that's good news. Okay, let's go to the next screen and we'll rewrite this thing in its new form. So we had this integral, and what we want to do is use that Pythagorean identity to rewrite it as 1 minus sine of x over cosine squared of x. And I know just by looking at this, it doesn't look like that helped us. But when we have a fraction like this, rational function, uh, one of the techniques that we've learned is to separate this into two fractions. And so we're going to split it on this minus sign. And we're going to make two definite integrals. On the left, we'll have 1 over cosine squared of x. And if you have spent any time working with trig functions, you know that that is, um, that there's a, there's a good identity that will replace that for us. And then on the other side, we'll have sine of x over cosine squared of x. Okay, so the reciprocal of cosine squared of x is just secant squared of x. And we've got this antiderivative memorized, so that won't be a problem. That's a tangent. We're going to have to do a little more thinking before we um, figure out what this expression changes to. We can split this into its two factors. So think of this as sine of x over cosine of x times 1 over cosine of x. It's just another way to think about uh, sine of x over cosine squared of x. And when you do that, we can easily see, hopefully, that this is just a tangent of x, and this is a secant of x. And once you write that definite integral in that form, right, there's a secant of x in there, and there's a tangent of x in there, along with this secant squared of x that we already know how to deal with. Both of these are slam dunk antiderivatives. This one over here in the green circle is going to turn into a tangent of x. And this one over here in the yellow circle is going to turn into a, a secant of x. And when I go to the next screen, we'll write this out again and, and get our final answer. Uh, and I think you'll agree, <laughs> excuse me, that this one turned out to be easier than it looked. So on the last screen, you remember we had... Uh, the integral of secant squared x dx, and right now we're going to do the antiderivative there and get tangent of x, minus the integral of secant x tangent of x, which is just secant of x, and then we slap a plus c on there, and we have found the antiderivative for, remember this is the problem that we were doing, 
the integral of 1 over 1 plus sine of x dx. And the trick was to multiply by the conjugate, 1 minus sine of x, in a form of 1. Transform this thing, thing into two pieces that we could do, and we end up with this result. So hopefully that helped. You're going to use this trick on the other problems, uh, 58 through 60, that we're working on tonight. Good luck.